Hey, this is Joe's Coordinate Graphing Review. Most of this will be pretty quick. We're just going to remind you of a few things. Uh, if you're graphing on an entire Cartesian plane, uh, the middle of it, the, the x-axis intersects with the y-axis at the origin. It's the coordinate 0, 0. Um, you don't have to label the coordinates like this every single time, but you do have to know uh, kind of what the properties are of each quadrants. So quadrant 1, you think, is up in the upper right-hand corner. If you envision this, say, to be a clock face, where's the number one? Well, it's up here. And um, you think from there, if this is a coordinate plane, a coordinate graph, think of a big C creating it this way. That's the direction that you're going. So one is up here like it is on a clock, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. Yes, you do use the Roman numerals. Um, with the properties of the quadrants, everything in quadrant one, how you get there is you go right and you go up. So both the y coordinate and the x coordinate are positive. For quadrant two, how do you get there from the origin? Well, you go left and then you go up. So everything in that quadrant is going to be negative and positive. Uh, quadrant three is directly opposite of quadrant one. You get there by going left and down. So all coordinates are negative. And then quadrant four, we access by going right and then going down. So everything is positive and then negative. So when we start plotting things later on, um, you just figure whichever points you're dealing with is the quadrant that you're going to emphasize. So now, just as a review, go ahead and plot these four points for me. Um, and remember, the x coordinate is the first one you see, the y coordinate is the second. Um, and the first three, a new vocab term perhaps, are all on lattice points. That's the intersection of uh, grids on a grid paper. This one is not going to be on a lattice point, meaning it's not going to be something exactly like this. So go ahead and pause it, and then we'll discuss. So for point number one, which is, or point A, which is 5, comma, negative 1, we get there by going 5 to the right and one up. Notice that the scale is slightly different on my axes. I just labeled different reference points, which is fine. So I'm going to plot it here, and we'll call it point A. Uh, point B is negative 4, 3. So we go 4 left, and then 3 up. And then we're going to call that point B, which is in quadrant 2. C is not in a quadrant. It's actually on an axis, uh, because one of its coordinates is 0. So this means I don't go left, I don't go right, but I do go 2 up. So that takes me to here. And point C is on the y-axis. It's a borderline. It's not actually in a quadrant. Um, D, I'm going to go left 6 and then up 4 and a half. So you figured if this is 3 and this is 6, uh, we got, let's see, 3, 4, 5. So midway between the two, this is a good way to estimate it here. We're going to go all the way to negative 6. And this is D. So you have point A, B, C, and D as a brief review of how to plot coordinates, your X and Y uh, coordinate pair. Um, now we got to discuss if you are given um, points from a table and told to graph them, um, every table has X coordinates listed first and Y coordinates listed second. So if it helps you, every pair you can make look like a pair by putting in parentheses kind of like this to remind yourself that these are all x's and these are all y's. So when you graph this, you don't have to actually graph in all four quadrants if your points um, aren't going to be in all four, four uh, quadrants because you want to make your graph look big, make it look easy to read, um, and be sure whenever you're graphing, you've read this page first because you're held accountable for everything that is in this. You want it to make sure you want to, this is your checklist for stuff that you have to create. So when I look at all three of these points, I notice that all the X's are positive, all the Y's are negative, and if you think back to our properties of the quadrants, which quadrant is this going to be? Well, it looks like we get there by going right and down. This is big old quadrant four. So we are not going to create all the entire plane here. We're just going to focus on the part that I need to. So when I am coming up with a graph, if I know that all of them are going to be in quadrant four, I'm going to go ahead and put my x-axis up here and my y-axis here. And there are arrowheads in all directions. I label X and Y. 
And then I think about what scale I'm going to create. Um, from x starts at 3 and it goes to 7, y starts at negative 6 and it goes to negative 14. So maybe a good scale of this is counting by, say, 2's along the y. So we'll say negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative 10, negative 12, negative 14, pretty good. Just make sure you kind of pre-plan when you uh, set your scale. Here we have a little bit more uh, space to deal with. So maybe we'll say uh, each box will be 1, 2, 3, oh that's not going to work because I'm trying to get to 7, so we'll say this is 2, 4, 6, and then we'll say every 3, there's your 8 there. So when we plot, this is a positive 3, so if this is 2 and this is 3, or this is 2 and this is 4, roughly, roughly halfway in between, uh, I go to the right 3 and then I go down 6, so we're looking at here. And then 5 would be like so, and then negative 10, you're going all the way down. Sometimes it's helpful to use your uh, straight edge to line them up. And then 7 would be roughly halfway, and negative 14 would be all the way here. And the next point that we come to is, do we connect dots? Well, it depends on your situation. So on this situation, I could have given you x's any possible number. X could have been 3.5, it could have been 3.6, 3.7. So because I'm just dealing with random numbers and there's not really a context of it, we could connect it if you wanted to. But in a story problem, we only connect things if it is known as continuous data versus discrete data. The reason we're connecting it is not because it goes on forever, that's not what we mean by continuous. We mean that there are points in between the ones that we pointed, we plotted. So an easier way to think of that about this is anything that is measurable can be continuous. For instance, you measure plant growth over 21 days. It could grow 1.2 inches, 1.25 inches, 1.7 inches. Uh, it doesn't just have to be one inch, two inch, three inch. Versus discrete data where you do not connect the dots because you can't have anything that's not a whole. So an example of this would be the number of car sold cells per day. So you sell one car, two car, three cars, but you do not sell 5.7 cars. So if it is limited to whole numbers, it is discrete. Do not connect the dots because it can't be anything between those values. Continuous you do connect because there, there exists um, data in between those points. So measurable means stuff like, you know, keywords amount, okay, versus keywords here number, things that you can actually count. Okay. Um, now we're going to try to apply this with our first wa word problem. So Juck is 20 meters below the surface of the water and begins to descend at a constant rate of 5 meters per, per minute. Graph his prog pro progress through 4 minutes. So you figured if we're graphing something we got to have some points. So my advice to you guys is to put your data into a table so you can see your coordinates. And you always start your data when x is 0. So in a word problem, we have an x, we have a y, but now we can actually label our x and y axes with uh, words. So the x will always be the independent variable, and most of the time that's going to be time. Uh, y will be the dependent variable that changes depending on what time it is. So in this case, we are plotting time in minutes. Notice that we are very specific with this. And the dependent will be the depth in meters. So again, when we come up with our table, we can say, yes, x is first, then y. But now we have a story, so we're going to um, label a little bit further. So x is our independent time in minutes. And y is our depth in meters. So m is a meter, min is minutes. So we have said that we're going to start when x is 0. And it says we're going for the first 4 minutes. So we'll say 0 minute, where is he at 1? one minute, two minute, three minutes, and four minutes. So it looks like right now we are looking at one, two, three, four, five points that we're able to plot. So at the beginning, if he hasn't descended yet, he is 20 minutes meters below the surface. So how do we represent 20 below? Negative 20. And then in the first minute, he has gone, he has descended, he has gone down another five meters. So at minute one, it's negative, 20 plus a negative 5, well that's negative 25. And then he goes down another 5, so that's negative 30, negative 35, and negative 40.
Okay? So here is your first step in addressing this problem. So we, before we can graph it, we need some points. So how do we find our points? We put them in a table. We start it with x is 0, and then go as far as they tell you. So at 0, he's negative 20, and at 1, it's negative 25, 2, negative 30, and so on. So we're going to plot these points, and again, we think about which quadrant we're going to maximize. So we notice it's a positive and a negative. We go to the right, we go down. Again, it's a big quadrant uh, 4. So when we set this up, we're going to think about creating a big quadrant 4. So we're going to put our x axes on the top and our y axis kind of off to the left as best we can. And now, instead of just labeling them y for the vertical axis and x for the horizontal axis, we're going to put um, units on them. So x represents uh, the time passed in minutes. Notice we put the units on there. And y represents the depth in meters. And we need some sort of a title in these things, but more importantly, we need to put a scale. So we look at our numbers. X goes from 0 to 4, so we have a, lots of space to play with. Uh, y goes from negative 20 to negative 40, so you can count maybe by fives, you can count by tens, whatever. Uh, but if it starts at negative 20 and you want to put a break, you would have something kind of like this. And then you can start it immediately at negative 20, and we'll say we're going to do negative uh, 30, negative 40, and then this, you have lots of space, so 0, maybe every 1, 2, 3, 4. Mm. So graphing requires some strategy when you're setting it up. But again, just make sure whatever scale that you choose is consistent with, along the axis. So the x and the y don't have to be labeled the exact same thing, but it needs to be consistent. And then at uh, when no time has passed, he's 20 below, so here's our first one. And then at one minute, he's 25 below, so he's looking at here. And then two minutes, he's 30 below. And then at 3 minutes, he is 40 below. So he is going at a constant rate, so you should see this linear pattern going on. And then the question is, do we connect the dots? Well, is depth something you count, or is it something that you measure? So is it possible that he is 20.7 feet meter, or meters below the surface? Yeah, it is. So at any given time, he could be anywhere in between here. And then we'll make it look like so. So again, your situation should fit uh, your graph. So the last thing that we're going to do today is I would like you to take a look at do now number two, and you see a graph that I would like you to construct a table for that lists the first three lattice points in this following graph. So this graph is a line. It continues forever in both directions, which means it's consi uh, it consists of an infinite amount of points uh, within it. But I have kind of emphasized where those points are on a lattice points. So you're looking at this one, this one, and this one. So after you've done that, we'll discuss, and you have something that should look like this. So when x is 0, it looks like y is at 1, and you have to pay attention to your scale. It's midway between the origin and 2, so y is 1. And then the next lattice point is over 5 and up 4, so you're looking at 5, 4, and then the final one is over 10 and up uh, 7. So this is 6. The next line up is actually 7, according to the scale. So here are the first um, three lattice points on this line. There are infinitely many points in between them, but I have instructed you to list only the lattice points.